Welcome to Only Brooklyn, uh, the Brooklyn Real Estate Summit 2014. <laughs> My name is Ofer Cohen. I'm the founder and president of Terra CRG. Uh, we're, we've been hosting this event. This is the third annual event that we're putting together, and it's just been so exciting to see the growth of this event with, obviously, the growth of the Brooklyn market. Uh, I don't want to take too much time. Uh, we have uh, an amazing lineup today. The, um, I just want to take a moment to thank my event partners, Carlos Ishura from the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce and Dave Mondrell from optionlofts.com. Um, kicking off our event this morning is uh, a true Brooklynite, someone that has been serving uh, the New York City community for over 30 years, and someone that from my personal uh, acquaintance with him in the first five months in office, I can tell you is a great ally for the development community and, and a big supporter of, of everything we're doing. And one more thing about Eric, he really understands and gets real estate. So without further ado, please, please help me welcome Eric Adams, the Borough President. Uh, thank you so much, and I thank you. We have a nice full house here, and I hope before you leave, you have an opportunity to uh, interact with those who are beside you. And I, too, want to thank my friend uh, Carlo over at the chamber. chamber. Uh, when he took over, uh, he brought the level of excitement uh, throughout the entire borough of Brooklyn, and we, we believe we are in a good place, and we're going to move in the right direction. I want to thank the summit organizers. Uh, this is important, Terrace, uh, CRG, as well as uh, Carl Westberg. We, we were together yesterday at the announcement of the mayor, and um, I look forward to what we're going to do together, as well as apartmentsinloft.com. Uh, uh, let me say this in my brief uh, moment. Uh, many of you know prior to uh, entering to politics, I uh, spent time as a member of the New York City Police Department. And I was actually, this was my precinct that you're in now. And this precinct went through um, a series of transformation. And we saw the possibilities. And when I purchased uh, my home on Lafayette Avenue, uh, many of my police officers thought something was wrong with me. They thought I had to have my head examined. You know, why would you buy on Lafayette Avenue? And the, the thought of uh, one day uh, people will be down at the Williamsburg Bridge and taking pictures. Back then, if you pull out a camera, some cat would snatch it and run off with it. <laughs> and now you're destined to be there. And I remember uh, walking into that shell of a home. And the walls were exposed. And as you walk through the floor, you can still hear a crunching sound because of the large number of crack vials that were all over the place. And finding contractors who were willing to park their trucks out front just to go through the renovation process was extremely difficult. But sometimes you have to allow your heart to be your vision and not your eyes, because your eyes can tell you only what's in front of you and not what the possibilities are. And that's what this industry is about. People say, well, how did you benefit so well to see a $300,000 property turn into over a million dollar pro property? Damn it, I had a vision. And those lack vision are now looking from the outside while those of us who took the risk and chance are now benefiting from that. And so you are part of that team of visionaries that understood that Brooklyn was something special. Something was taking place in Brooklyn that I say over and over again. They lied to me in school when they said Earth was the center of the universe and the sun was. It was, it was Brooklyn, baby. Brooklyn. <laughs> I don't care what anybody tells you. We are doing some things here in this borough. And I found out, you know, recently when uh, my friend up in uh, Toronto, as he go in and out of rehab, decided that he was going to bet against the Nets. Uh, you know, send me my CD. We know the Nets won. But even more than that, 
I have a true vision of the possibilities of Brooklyn. The Nets are going to the next series with Miami. Miami has 790,000 residents. Brooklyn has 2.6 million residents. We are not the little brother of Manhattan. We are the big brother of the city. And if you focus your attention on Brooklyn, if you look at the business possibilities all throughout the neighborhoods and take away the belief that no community lacks the ability to develop. When we broke ground with the mayor on Livonia Avenue and able to build what's called Livonia Commons, that was a game changer from East New York to the east side of the borough. The possibilities of what we can do and how we can do in a correct fashion brings about exciting ideas. So I like to look at where we were, where we are now, and where do we need to go in my role as bar president. Government has no business being in your business. Government is supposed to motivate business and find ways to ensure that we can use the building and possibilities to do great things. One, we can't create more land, but we do have a lot of air rights, and we must be creative in the use of those air rights. We should allow schools and other governmental buildings to be able to sell their air rights to developers and allow them to build. And we must move away from this archaic building and air rights system where you can only develop either next door or if it's a landmark property, you could develop across the street. No, you should be able to develop with those air rights in any geographical area that's possible to allow people to build up. That's why I called last week to develop the entire Broadway corridor from the junction all the way to the Williamsburg Bridge. Those are great opportunities, and you don't have to build on uh, the, the street level. You can set back, but at the same time, you can build up. Exciting times. And then we got to look at what we're doing with landmarking. You can't use landmarking just to stop building from, de de from developing. I love the idea that we landmark those areas that need to be landmarked, but you can't landmark the entire borough of Brooklyn to prevent people from building an excitement that Brooklyn is bringing by using a landmark tool to stop that from happening. That is unacceptable. <laughs> landmark those that are old, but allow the new areas to build. A perfect example of, of that is what we did on Fourth Avenue and when Carlo was at the uh, bar president office with bar president Marty Markowitz. They were able to develop Fourth Avenue and build up. Hotels came to the areas and communities came and thrived with, by protecting the inner streets. But at the same time, the opportunities were there. And then we must be creative in the new form of developing property. 8020 is the old model, as the mayor said yesterday. We have to look at 50, 30, 20. Who builds community are middle class New Yorkers, the police officers, the firefighters, the teachers those middle class civil servants. We saw that by a program that many people were not aware of. It was called the Officer Teacher Next Door Program. HUD produced the program and allowed those police officers, firefighters, and teachers to buy homes in blighted areas, to stabilize those areas, and give them the opportunity to turn those communities around. And you saw that take place throughout uh, Bedford-Stuyvesant and parts of South Jamaica, Queens, and parts of the Bronx, where teachers and firefighters came to communities that were often wrote off, and now the possibilities were there. And we need to have permanent affordable housing, where permanent places where Brooklynites and New Yorkers are able to have a place to stay and a place to live, because we all know a home is more than four walls. It's a place where dreams are made and born. And it's a precursor to sleep, to experience the American dream. And so many people are waking up with the nightmarish reality that they don't have a home to stay in. You can't have a borough or a city where a person has an empty plate and is sleeping on a cardboard box on a subway grate, thinking that they're not going to be part of the greatness of this borough of Brooklyn. I believe we are better than that, and we're going to continue to move in the direction to do that. And to attract those commercial developments, I hear it often from people who are looking to buy property or to rent commercial places in Brooklyn. 
We can't just localize our economy in downtown Brooklyn. I know downtown Brooklyn partnership would love to hear that all businesses should be downtown, but the reality is it must spread throughout the borough. There was something that took place years ago with Robin Moses, those of, those of you who remember. Robin Moses built highways and low bridges to prevent buses from going out to Long Island. We're doing the same thing with broadband. If we do not ensure broadband is spread throughout the entire borough, businesses won't go to East New York, businesses won't go to Brownsville, businesses won't go to other places where they need the broadband and the capacity to ensure that they can bring out the, the, the necessary technology that they need to build out their businesses. You can't have a great business if the computer is crashing every other day. That's unacceptable. And part of our overall plan is to map the entire borough and ensure that we build out uh, the enti enti entire borough. And so we're in a good place, Brooklyn. We're in a good place to do some exciting things. And you have a borough president that is your partner, a borough president that wakes up every day and before I shave, I look at the mirror and all it says is build, baby, build. <laughs> build. <laughs> Keep building. It's music to my ears when I hear a jackhammer. It's music to my ears when I see someone with a hard hat. It's music to my ears when I see a fence up and say, here's what's to come. It's music to my ears when I see the construction companies moving forward. It's music to my ears when I see that. And I know that some people who don't understand and appreciate the beauty of building a community because there's some people who feel as though they have their home, they have their place of business. So let's slow everything down and romanticize how great it is just to have a community that looks the way it always has been. That's not acceptable. They must come along. And I know I'm singing to the choir, but a lot of people out there are off key. They need to sing this, talk, this tune. They don't understand what we are talking about, of building the borough of Brooklyn, that people can realize the greatness that this borough has to offer. So we're more than just a great team that's getting ready to, re to win a ring. We're everyday people, everyday homeowners that realize that there's some great possibilities in the borough of Brooklyn. And I commit to you, I gave this city 22 years of my life when I wore a bulletproof vest and stood on these same street corners and protected children and families. That commitment and dedication did not change when I took off that blue uniform and put on a blue suit as a state senator, and it definitely is not going to change when I became the borough president of the greatest borough, the greatest city, and the greatest country. Let's make sure we do all we can to ensure that all Brooklynites appreciate the greatness, everything Brooklyn. Everything is consistent with the thought process of making Brooklyn a great place to live. Thank you very much.